Good morning, Broker Nation. Todd Bitter here with JKS Mortgage in Scottsdale, Arizona. Just wanted to come to you this morning and talk about how to get motivated for the week. I know that right now, you know, it's tough out there, especially you guys that are focused on purchase business um, because the inventory is so low. So I just want to run over a few tips on what I do that kind of makes a big difference for my realtors, which in turn helps me get contracts um, under accept it. And that goes a long way to building re realtor relationships when you can be part of that process. So one thing that I always uh, talk about, and it's a simple, easy thing to do, but very few brokers or loan officers do it, is my realtors know when they submit that offer to the listing agent, they CC me on the offer. As soon as I see that offer come in, I review it. I wait about 15 or 20 minutes just so I know that the listing agent has seen it. And I immediately call that listing agent and I pump up that listing agent with, hey, I've already done all my due diligence on this particular customer. You know, we've got all the bank statements, the W-2s, the pay stubs, the self-employment stuff if they're self-employed. I make sure that listing agent knows that, hey, this is a strong pre-approval. It's not just a piece of paper and this customer will close on time. I hear... Nine out of 10 times, I hear the listing agent say, wow, you know, thank you. I, nobody ever does this, you know, and to me, it's like the simplest thing in the world. And I know some of my buddies in the business are doing it, but I think as a whole, especially maybe the retail guys aren't doing it. So that'll go a long way to getting offers accepted because that little bit of human touch, if you're competing with another offer is very, very close. And that other offer is from, say, like a better.com who we all know cannot close a door, let alone a loan on time. Um, yeah, that might make the difference. They may take a few hundred dollars less on the contract just to work with a local broker that they know has done their due diligence. So don't forget that, you know, make sure you do those calls and they'll go a long way. So that's one of the things that I do in this market to really help my listing agents get contracts accepted. And it'll, like I said, listing agents love it. The buyer's agents I'm working with, my agents that are referring people to me, they absolutely love it because it just is that one extra step to qualifying that customer. The, the other thing that you can do is you just got to have those hard conversations with your clients. You know, the realtors are telling them that you're not going to be able to offer 20,000 below list, that you may have to offer 20,000 over list, in fact, depending on the market you're in. Here in Scottsdale, Phoenix area, I, we're, we're seeing offers going 10% over lists, sometimes even higher. Uh, waiving contingencies, waiving appraisals, you name it. So it's a very tough market. So the realtors are telling these people this, but they a lot of times they think the realtors are just trying to make a quick buck. They think, oh, well, you know, the more I spend, the more they make. So it goes a long way when you kind of have that talk with the buyers to set that expectations. And, you know, I do that and I go over it with every buyer about what the marketplace is like right now, about what to expect, about the fact that you may have to waive the appraisal contingency and what that means. You know, if you're putting 5% down and the appraisal comes in 10 grand low, what does that mean towards your, you know, cash out of pocket? So setting those expectations with that buyer for what's going on in your marketplace, you know, over ask or over list uh, offers, uh, appraisals that are coming in below value. You know, it's really important to make them buyers understand Hey, I might be putting 5% or 10% or 20% down, but that may not be the, ultimately what I am putting down. Because if that appraisal comes in low and you've waived your appraisal contingency, you know, have that realistic talk because it'll save a lot of aggravation when that appraisal comes in low and all of a sudden they need an extra 10,000 out of pocket or 20,000. Um, the realtors, again, will love it because my realtors know when they have a talk with their buyers then I have a talk. I'm reinforcing everything that they're telling them. And it sets, that, sets the expectation way higher for that buyer so that they understand what's going to happen when they do go to make that offer. Um, it just makes for a smoother transaction. And, and my realtor saying, hey, this is great. You know, this guy isn't now expecting to get 20 grand off list. He's at least up to list. And now he knows he may have to go over because I reiterated to them what they had already told him. So Use that to your advantage. Again, it's all about building value for your referral partner, your realtor. Um, now, a lot of you guys do a lot of refis and, you know, 
Right now, rates are still staying pretty good, but we are seeing the refi market slowly dry up. Um, I'm seeing less calls for them. Um, I'm passing off less of my refis to my guy, Adam, you know, because a lot of those cu customers have refied already and rates are up from where they were back in mid-February. So you, you need to go through your database, you know, find find those customers that haven't refied yet. More importantly, find that customer that's got a ton of equity and a lot of debt. So you can st start talking about debt consolidation. Um, not something I do a lot of, but we all have, even as clean as my database is, I still have customers that could benefit greatly from, the, from consolidating some of their debts into their mortgage and saving hundreds of dollars a month. Um, it's out there. PMI, anybody that took a loan with PMI in 19 or 20, there's a really good chance if you're in a hot market like Arizona, um, where that PMI can be refied off, even if you're not lowering the rate at all. Um, got a client right now that I'm about to close we actually took his rate up, I think, a tiny amount. I think it was at like 2.79, and we took him to 2.83. So it went up a little, not much, but we got rid of $140 a month PMI, all because the market had shifted so much with values. So he was thrilled. The rate meant nothing because that PMI dropping off saved him a ton of money a month. So use that. Think about that. Always look for the other ways to refi people, not just a lower rate. Um, but more importantly, focus on purchase, guys. Um, the refis are going away slowly. There's still plenty of them out there, but don't be caught with your pants down holding no refis come January or February when the refi market is totally drying up or who knows, maybe before that. And you're like wondering where the purchase business has come from because the guys that are focusing on realtors now, they're the ones that the realtors are gonna remember. My realtors right now, or, you know, saying, hey, you know, I know the floodgates are about to open and all these guys are going to be bugging me to send business their way. But where were they at the last year, year and a half, two years? Um, you know, focusing on those agents now during your busiest times or what's going to make them remember you when you're slow and you need those agents. Um, the other thing I would stress, and I know I talk about this every single time I talk to any of you guys, is answer your damn phone. Um it takes a few minutes out of your day. You know, there was a discussion on a Facebook thread Memorial Day weekend about guys saying, well, I took the whole weekend off. No way. I need my me time. I'm not answering the phone. And then other people saying the opposite, like me saying, hey, I took my time. I, I took phone calls all weekend. You know, I look at it this way. A, a five minute phone call from one of my agents just to see what's going on, you know, and they say, hey, I got Mr. Smith that wants to make an offer tonight. You know, maybe I spend a half hour with Mr. Smith getting an application, you know, probably not even that because I do everything automated through my website. But that 20, 30, 40 minute phone call, you know, that might be a four or five thousand dollar commission. You know, I know I don't mind taking an hour out of my day to make five thousand dollars or three thousand or two thousand or whatever. You know, I don't think anybody that's watching this, you know, would give up three or $4,000 for one hour of their day. Um, you know, I know we're all, um, as I like to call it, a lot of you guys are 2020 rich. You just came off the biggest reuse of your life, but it's not going to last. So be answer, you know, be ready to take those calls. You know, I hear people talk about how intrusive realtors are on weekends and holidays. They're not intrusive guys. That's when they're working, you know, realtors don't work nine to five and the ones that do aren't very successful. So, our job is to assist them and be partnered with them. And it's not a partnership if you only want to take phone calls Monday through Friday when they need you on Saturdays and Sundays and maybe occasionally a holiday, you know. So be ready for that. Be be conscious of that. You know, if you have other people that work with you, trade off. Say, you know, I'll take Sundays, you take Saturdays, you know, every other holiday. You know, you don't have to work seven days a week. You just need to have your phone answered seven days a week. And that is something that so many in our business lack. It is what I consider the most basic of basic things that we do as salespeople in the mortgage industry or any industry. If you if you sold cars, you'd be working Saturdays and Sundays. If you sold anything and your phone rings, that's your job to take that call. I'm not saying you have to work 24 seven, but somebody should answer that phone. So work in shifts if you have a team. Most of you guys have teams. 
I don't really have a team, but I do have a partner. I have, you know, Adam who works with us. You know, we all work individually separately in our own little worlds and our, our own houses. And we're kind of like three one man operations. But when I want to have a full day where I don't take any calls, I can do it because I can pass it off to one of them guys. You know, um, even if those guys weren't with me, if I had nobody else in this world, you know, I would if I wanted a day off, I would probably forward my calls over to one of my competitors like uh, like Tom Mancuso over at Next or somebody that I'm tight with that I can trust because I'd rather a competitor that works with me. You know, you can partner with another competitor. Just make sure your phone's answered because your realtors will remember that. And, you know, if you have again, if you're a one man shop with absolutely no help whatsoever, find a local partner that you trust. I guarantee you know somebody in your market that you trust and you're friendly with and you guys can partner that way, you know, um, help each other out that way. But don't let your phone go to voicemail. Nobody likes voicemail. Nobody likes to wait three, four days to get a call back or even six or eight hours to get a call back. So again, answer your phone, please. It will go a long, long way. Um, it's everything that I, my number one thing that's helped me create realtor relationships in this world has been communication. Every one of my realtors, if you polled them and said, what's the, what's the best thing that you like working with Todd? I guarantee you the number one thing they're gonna say is he's available when I need him. And cause I've asked them and that's always the number one answer is, you're available. You know, you're the guy I can count on if I'm in a crunch and I really need something on a Saturday at 630 at night. I know you'll answer your phone. You know, now I know, guys, it's not always the funnest thing to do to be available all the time. But if you want to succeed and really crush it in this market, it's kind of needed. Now, you know, I'm not saying you all should have to do it. Some of you are very content, mainly focusing on refis and not having to do that. And that's perfectly fine. I mean, but you'll never, I don't think anybody's going to make it to a hundred million a year without being available when the realtors need you. Um, or when the refi market dries up, you know, and you need those realtors, they remember who was there for them when they, when everybody else is too busy for them. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, answer your phone. Again, I've said it a hundred times on this over the last few weeks, probably, and probably a dozen times just in this little video chat. Um, but again, motivation for the week is just go out there, find some new agents, crush it with communication, make them feel like they're the most important people in the world, and they will reciprocate it back to you. You know, you'll get partnerships built that way. Go out there, go through your database, Find those customers that haven't refied or find those customers that did refi a year ago, but now they've got some debt. You know, 2020 was rough on a lot of people that weren't in industries that were work from home industries. Some of those people maintain their credit. Some of those people have a ton of equity, but now they have a ton of credit card debt due to the fact that they had to kind of live on their credit cards a lot last year. There's a lot of people out there right now, right now that are in that same boat that you could just open up to them look at their situation and probably save them hundreds of maybe even thousand dollars a month just by refinancing that debt into a debt consolidation loan. So don't lose sight of those refis, even though I'm the last guy to probably preach about refis. Um, but I understand them. I used to do a lot of them. I just don't have time for them now, but I still understand how you have how the best way to get them. And I help my, my uh, loan officer Adam with that, you know, so, so just be focused on what's in front of you. Um, don't get tied into these crazy projects. You know, I, I see people on Facebook and the Brokers Are Better group, you know, who can do a 16 unit apartment building for $3 million with 5% down. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, first of all, you wasted, you wasted 30 seconds just typing that out because that's a waste of time. You know, find, use your, use that time to pick up three or four easy refis or pick up the phone and talk to three or four realtors. I see it all, all the time, you know, guys that don't want to let go of things that are never going to close. And you got to know when to say no in this business. And no can be one of the most powerful words you say in this business, because I see it time and time again, we tend to want to help everybody, but not everybody can be helped. And it's, you have to know where that line is and when to say no, because saying no will free up so much more of your time 
that you can that you can focus that attention on the people that actually are customers that will close that need your attention. So again, answer your damn phone, be willing to say no, look for your database for refis and debt consolidation loans and go out and hug a realtor today. I mean, seriously, go out there, talk to some agents, you know, tell them why you're, why they should work with you because you will answer your phone. You will be there when they need you. You know, you don't have to, be working every night till midnight to do that. But occasionally, if they need you at that time, answer your phone. They'll love you for it and they will call you back time and time again. And they'll remember you're the guy that helps them when they need it most. So, again, guys, have a great week. Go out there and crush it. You know, show them why bro brokers are better. Got the shirt on to represent today. Um, you know, join. If you're not a member, AIM, you wouldn't be watching this. But if you are a member, ask your friends to join. You know, there's a lot of brokers out there that aren't part of AIM yet. It's so important that we get every broker involved in AIM because they do things like these videos and every week they're putting out fantastic content. Um, we're about to have some happy hours in July for National Brokers Day, Mortgage National Brokers, Mor National Mortgage Brokers Day. Um, you know, so go to those mixers, go to those happy hours, meet other people. You know, I can't say enough about what AIM's done for my career, even though I was doing very well before I met AIM, you know, it's pushed me to that next level because it's made me connect with people that are, that motivate me. I mean, there's, there's guys in that I meet and girls I talk to in AIM every day that just motivate me to do better and want to be better. And then I go to mixers like here and there, like the one in Scottsdale, there'll be people, my competitors there, but I don't really look at them as competitors. We're all one big family in the broker community. We just happen to compete against each other on occasion. But when we do compete each other, it's so much better because we know at least one of us is going to get it. Um, I'll leave a really quick story about the associations with AIM and how impressive they are. Last night, I get an email from Evan Einhorn and he said, hey, you know, I got a customer that just called me to pre-qualify with me, but I saw that they were already working with you. I told them that they should just stay with you because you're, they're in great hands with you. Um, you know, that, why would Evan do that? Well, because I would do it back for him. And he knows that just like I do it for any of you guys. I try to never take food off other brokers tables here. Um, but if it wasn't for AIM, Evan and me wouldn't even know each other. And me and Evan would be butting heads going out like gladiators over this one customer. But because of AIM, we've built that bond that we trust each other. And he knows that by passing that customer back to me, it'll come back to him from, from me the next time around. In fact, one of my realtors works with Evan occasionally, and I've promoted Evan to her and said, hey, he's a good guy. Use him when you don't use me. You know, so those, those bonds and friendships and trust are only here because of AIM. If it wasn't for AIM, we wouldn't have that. And so get your fellow brokers that aren't a member of AIM to join. Get them away from NAM. That's a dying organization. It's worthless to the broker community. They do a few good things, but overall, it's it's just a dinosaur. It's not what the AIM group is. It's not what brokers are better is. And I can't stress it enough, guys. Go out there, get other people to join, and let's make our community bigger, stronger, and better every single day because brokers are better. So next week, tune in for the weekly sales rally. Uh, always great content. There'll be a great speaker. So don't miss it. Every Monday, weekly sales rally for AIM.